Okay, we're starting another school year, hard to believe, short summer. And let's first talk about the accomplishments y'all have had over the past year here at the Technology Center. I know y'all have grown and continued to add things. Let's just start with what, what are some of the uh, biggest uh, things that y'all did this past year you want people to know about? So we completed uh, our medical lab. We had some donations, um, a, a very large one from AnMed Health and we completed our health science lab and that's to integrate our CNA, our certified nursing assistant, and our patient care technician, PCT, program in completion. So our students actually leave us and um, we've always been able to have the, the certified nursing assistant, but the, the patient care technician was just a piece that we needed to add um, to help out AnMed specifically because that's what they're in need of. And so they gave us a donation and to redo our lab and we added that component so our students are actually getting um, either one or both certification. This year we uh, certified 30 of them. So it's a good start and I think AnMed um, hired quite a few of them. You think that'll bring more people into that program? Absolutely, and that program's always been at max anyways. We we're, we're turning students away from that. Um, it's a very popular um, program because it's, you know, obviously it's a job they can get right out of high school. And it bumps them up on that nursing um, waiting list if they want to go into it. And most of those students go into the nursing field. So it, it, it gives them a little edge um, going to college. Um, the other thing that we are moving toward is to uh, finish our eSports lab. So we started it last year, an eSports team. Uh, we had several different um, games that they played, um, and the students got together and did a really good job. We, we, we didn't finish. We, we, Mid-season, mid we did really well, and then didn't finish as well as uh, we did mid-season, but it was our first time doing it, and um, I think we've won um, several regional tournaments, uh, but once we got to the state and um, the nation, it just kind of snowballed from there. But our students had a lot of exposure and good experience, and now we're setting up an eSports lab for them to actually do it. Right now, um, the students were just placed in a classroom um, using a normal computer, so we, we beeped up our, our system and our technology here, so they should have a pretty good shot. And we should have three teams total playing um, three different um, games uh, in the fall and in the spring. There's lots of scholarships out there now for eSports. It is amazing. It's actually become um, uh, an athletic event almost. This is a very... We're talking about an Olympic event, event right? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's amazing to see the students because um, this is a different type of student. This is not your traditional athlete. These are students that um, dedicate their time on um, playing these games and they're actually getting money and winning scholarships and going into, into college programs with this um, and winning a lot of money. It's amazing how much is out there. And so we kind of found that niche. It's nice to, to be able to find those that um, are gonna be nurses or welders or cosmetologists or auto mechanics but to find that other niche of this gaming um, generation, more or less, um, I think we found it with eSports. So um, we are finishing a lab. Uh, we started it this year. We should be finishing it next year, and, and our eSports will be moving into it. And as it grows, people will be able to uh, watch it online as just as they watch other sports, right? I mean, it's gonna, Sure, it'll be a tournament. Watch the, yeah, the, yeah, so they actually can come into our facility. So we have a spot where parents can come in, and they can um, watch the students play, and uh, there'll be a, a, a TV broadcast system in there that they can watch. We actually will have what they call a shoutcaster. So this is a person who will... Um, do a play-by-play -play, just like you would for a ball game. Uh, you have an announcer, same thing. They would have an announcer, announcer and they would actually do play-by-play. -play. That space will also have virtual reality in there as well. So we'll have several um, 10 to 12 stations set up for virtual reality. Um, and that's a huge thing that you can use not just in the programming and game design. I mean, you can use it in the medical field and welding. Um, you know, you can actually go in there and do a surgery um, with virtual reality. So we'll have a system set up so uh, our faculty and staff can bring their students in there and actually do um, projects off of virtual reality. Um, the other thing that we finished this year was our um, dual credit with EMT and Tri-County Tech. So Tri-County has always been here with Mechatronics and now we've brought in the EMT component which we did prior to COVID. Um, and now we stopped when COVID hit and now we're back into it. So we um, had a very good turnout 
for our students and we just had our first pass, um, the EMT certification. They have to be 18 to take it, so we're, wor we're working through the process of that. We have several more, I think nine more that's gonna take it as well. So we should, um, we should have, a, they should be a firefighter and an EMT when they, um, when they after they turn 18. So that's, that's kind of a cool little thing. Um, we, we won a lot of awards this year with um, our auto collision, won first place in Skills USA, our advertising design, our graphic imaging did that. Um, we won a lot of second and third places as well. Um, our media broadcasting brought home a lot of awards. We are, uh, they won the National uh, Radio Station of the Year, and that's a, that's a national award. Um, we're the only high school run radio station in South Carolina, so there is no competing within us in the state. So we have to compete nationally. So we won the radio station of the year. And this is, this is a pretty big honor because we compete against schools that um, have as many students that we have in our school, 2,000 students, just in their media broadcasting program. So for little old town in Williamston to win um, the radio station of the year, it's, it's kind of good. And this is a three-peat, I believe. We won it three times. Um, we also had four other um, pretty big awards during that first place awards. Um, we got first place in our drone competition this year in the state, went to nationals. Um, didn't finish as well in nationals. Um, this was our first time doing it. We also did a rocket challenge this year and um, did really good. Um, went to, um, to do the finals and um, didn't make it quite that far, but um, we look at doing the rocket, rockety challenge again this year. Um, in our graphics and digital art, we won the entire high school division for South Carolina and North Carolina in um, the printing industry. It's called PICA, P-I-C-A. We won um, the entire high school division on there again, and this is something we've, I feel like we've won probably the last five, six, seven years. Um, and then, of course, our culinary arts team won the state again and went to nationals. We ended up um, second place. Um, first place in um, culinary and fifth place in um, our fourth place in our uh, culinary arts team so we've, we've done pretty good we've won second last year um, and so we continue to, to, to place in the first five we just hadn't won won the whole thing so we look forward to doing that in a year and that's pretty challenging if you've never seen that before the students um, make three meals uh, three dishes uh, an entree uh, an appetizer and a dessert in one hour with no running water and no electricity. And it's a pretty high-tech menu and they have to do some math figuring, they have to uh, create um, costs and they have to do uh, how much it, it's going to be per meal and, and figure out a profit and those kind of things. So it's not just cooking, it's actually um, evolving the, the entire thing. So we look forward to doing some, some pretty good things. Do you feel like y'all fully recovered from COVID and all the challenges that brought? I think so. I think I think we've we've pretty much moved past it. Our enrollment is is back up, um, uh, almost to the pre-COVID. I mean, we are sitting right at within probably ten students, and we'll probably exceed that this year. How many students? Uh, we're just at two. We just completed two thousand and one students last year, so we're really close um, to to where we're where we're at. I we are anticipating another sixty to seventy students this year. Um, which which will pretty much put us at capacity. And we've always turned students away from some particular programs. We always have a lot of students going into welding and, and nursing and uh, mechatronics. But we have a few openings here or there for, for some of the programs. But um, I, I, I think we're almost at capacity for all of that. I know the people in, in the school districts you serve know a lot about you and about the, the work y'all have done here. Remind people how long y'all been here and the, how y'all were positioned when technology really took off. Yeah, so this is actually year 50 for us. So in August, when our students walk through the doors, this is 50 years that we have been open and we've been um, using having students in our facility. So this is our 50th um, year. So we're excited to see um, the progress that we came from from 1972 uh, when we opened and then 73 is our first graduating class. So that's kind of where we're at this year. Um, we've come a long ways. We started with uh, 250 some odd students and now we're over 2,000, so it's a lot. We started with 12 programs and now we're at about 22 programs. So we've 
doubled where we're at. Um, our footprint as far as our space wise, I think we started with about um, 40 acres and now we're sitting about 65 acres. So we're quite large. So, um, so we've come a long ways. Um, technology really started changing in the late 90s. Um, and I think 2000 is when our community and our parents really realized that, hey, this is not really a vocational center anymore. This is a place where students can figure out what they want to do after high school or figure out what they don't want to do after high school. And if they don't want to go to college, they still can get a great job. Um, but if they want a college, they still can go to the Career Center and be able to do that as well. So I think that's kind of when the shift hit was about 2000-ish, right in that area. And then um, we just have a lot of buy-in from our community and our, and our two districts. They believe in us. We have a great placement rate, so when our students leave us, they're, they're put in field in their, in their desired field, whatever that may be they're taking here, or they're in college. Um, and we've had a, over a 90% placement rate. This past year we had 95% placement rate. So our students are out in our communities working. Majority in Anderson County too. We'll dabble into Greenville a little bit and a little bit into Pickens and Oconee, but for the most part, you know, 80% of our students are sitting in Anderson County. They leave us and they're sitting in a job or in post-secondary education in Anderson County. You mentioned a couple of these when we were talking about awards. What are some of the most popular programs? Um, I'd say popular. What, what are the, the highest demand, I guess? is Mechatronics is very, very much in demand, um, and that's a lower enrollment because Tri-County um, kind of tells us how many students we can put in that program. Sometimes I push the envelope with that, um, and I just throw a couple more students in there. Um, but um, they love welding. Um, cosmetology is huge, which we opened up barbering last year. So that has helped, well, we thought would help alleviate some of it, but it really hasn't. Those students still want cosmetology just as much. Um, so uh, uh, game design, media broadcasting, sports medicine, that's a huge, very huge program. And we have to look at the number of students in the program and the available jobs that's out in the community. Um, I could probably open up five sections of, of sports medicine. But do we really need that in our, in our area? Do we need to have five, you know, five classes of, of 24 students leaving us and going out and not finding that job? So, you know, we have to look at flooding the market and what the demand is. And right now in Anderson County, manufacturing is huge. And so we are working toward doing CNC, because that is what our community wants, advanced manufacturing. Um, and we're working to create a space for that, because we do not have the, the building or the, the real estate for that right now. So we are in the process of building a maintenance building that will move the current maintenance space that they're in out to what we call the back 40, out past the school, and we're going to be building a new building closer to the school for those students in advanced manufacturing. I hope to do that in the next two years. I want to talk to you more about what's coming up this year. One other thing I wanted to mention, though, is I know uh, how important are business partnerships to what y'all do? Oh, gosh, we couldn't do what we're doing without business partnerships. This year we, um, we had um, well over 2,000 um, business partnerships, whether it be an internship, a co-op, a simple job shadow, or a service learning um, uh, experience for our students. So uh, we, we feel like the work-based learning is the most important part to what we do here. So putting the students out into the work field, whether it's just for a two-week internship or is it for a placed job where they actually get paid, that is the key part. And we cannot do that unless we have businesses who believe in us and um, come here. They, they, a lot of businesses come and they'll do presentations for us. They donate equipment. They donate time. They do mock interviews and then they accept a student into their facility they take their time and train them and nine times out of ten that student stays there so it's a it's a win for the business a win for us a win for our students um, but if we don't have those business partners coming in and seeing us there's just no way we can do um, what what our mission is which is figuring out what the kids want to do after high school and you'll work closely with Anderson County and Anderson County Economic Development as well, correct? Absolutely. We do a lot with Economic Development, Terry and Burris and their entire staff. Um, uh, we are included in a lot of things, and um, we're very fortunate to have, have that whole crew with us. 
What are you looking forward to? We're looking at 20, can you believe it's 2023, 2024 school year? What are y'all looking forward to? So we're looking forward to finishing the maintenance facility like I talked to you about earlier um, and um, hopefully breaking ground in the next two years on a CNC building. Um, it will be called Advanced Manufacturing. Um, Arthrex um, donated a, a nice little chunk of money to start it. We're looking for some more donations. Um, the sooner we can save the money up to build a building, the sooner we can open up that advanced manufacturing. And um, I hope that it's going to be just as popular as our mechatronics um, courses are. Um, I'm having, I want to have space for two programs in there. So hopefully we can, um, we can have about uh, 50 students coming out of our facility every year into that specific CNC advanced manufacturing to help feed our industries here in, in Anderson County. Um, we have secured money uh, for a barn. So our agricultural program is going to get a barn next year. So we're excited about that and expand uh, a little bit more into some, um, some animal uh, careers. Uh, that's kind of what our students look like they want. So we're going to have space for that. Um, we look forward to moving into our eSports lab like I had stated um, and then expand our construction program. We have a huge demand in construction right now. Um, we've expanded the uh, electricity component, so now the students take uh, construction and electricity all at the same time. We do a little bit of plumbing, very little masonry, but we do touch on it, and these students get um, that exposure, and we're noticing that um, our enrollment is just increasing and increasing, so we added a, another teacher, so we have two teachers right now, and we need an outdoor space. We've built two tiny houses in the last couple of years, several storage units, and we need a space that our students can um, uh, do some outside things. Right now they're just doing it on um, gravel and grass. And so um, Zefco Flooring here in Williamson has done a couple of benefits for us, and they've donated a nice chunk of money. So we're going to take that money and we're going to lay some uh, concrete down. So that'll give a, a better uh, footing space when you put ladders down on on grass it's not always the safest thing so we want to make a safe experience so we're gonna um, put some concrete down for them and hopefully eventually down the road cover it so that'll help um, with the weather and the student can get out there a little bit more when the weather um, happens as well so um, so we'll look for again physical expansion and, and more students and speaking of that more students, I guess you are preparing because this district's growing very rapidly, correct? Yes, and you know, we're almost at capacity. So sitting there, um, most of our programs are at capacity, but um, the few that are not, um, I, I just, we have to add space. We have to add buildings in order to, to increase enrollment. So um, down the road, maybe logistics will be coming in play. Um, and uh, we're going to have to add instructional space in order to accommodate those students, especially from Anderson One. Let's talk about some of the things you do there involve certifications which provide jobs quickly. Explain what certification processes are. So all of our programs have a certification component in it. So the students have the option um, to earn a certification in their specific field. For example, in law enforcement, they can't become real police officers because they have to go to the academy and they can't do that until they're 21. However, we can do a 911 dispatcher and we can do a security guard. So those students have the opportunity when they leave us to have a job within field with an industry certification. So this year we had a 98% passage rate on our certifications, which is pretty huge. We gave, um, our students earned over 2,000 certifications, 2,022 to be exact, anywhere from firefighting to EMT, like I mentioned, Adobe certification, um, CNA, PCT, um, uh, auto collision and auto tech has so many and electricity components, you know, that's becoming more and more. Um, we started dabbling a little bit in electrical vehicles, so they've got a certification in that now. Um, but, but culinary arts, pro start, um, serve safe. So all of our programs have implemented a certification within that specific industry that they can earn so they're job ready when they leave us, or what the state would call it college and career ready. And you got a lot of new parents moving into the district. Mm -hmm. uh, how can they find out what's going on out here and can they come tour it? How does that work? Yes, we have an open house every year. So in January we'll have an open house and um, these are specifically, we look forward to those ninth graders that are be coming out here because most of our programs are start the 10th grade. So those will be these current ninth graders that are here um, and our community. We're going to have a 50th 
kind of opening with them so we're going to invite the community in as well in January we do have our registration day coming up so uh, those current students would hopefully bring their parents and their um, their selves in here they can see us in January I mean in um, in August it's I think it's August the 1st if I'm not correct I'll have to go back and look at that um, so they can come in and see us um, our website's always available. We do, we're very active on social media, so you can like any of our Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram posts. I think we even have some TikToks going on.